I. There's nothing more frustrating than buying a pack, 50 pack of blank DVDs and to have your player tell you that the discs are not recognizable or not being able to play your favorite movie you've had for years. I do a lot of video recording on DVD discs and I must have thrown away at least 50 brand new blank discs thinking it was the fault of the manufacturer. And using a lens cleaning disc seems to help for maybe a disc or two, then the issue would start all over again. As it turns out, it's not the disc, it's your player. In 2007, I bought three of these Sony DVD recorders refurbished from Sony. And all at once, they each failed to read disc. At first, I assumed they were programmed to somehow stop reading in the year 2020. Well, that didn't make any sense. Fortunately, I discovered the problem, thus the solution. If your DVD player recorder has a few years on it, chances are the grease on the lens head glide rods has dried up and is causing the lens head to stick when it first tries to read a disc. Now, if the head can't glide across to read the disc and read its format, then all bets are off when it comes to playing a recording. Grease is a homogenized concoction of oil and soap. And once the grease is dried and pushed off to the ends of the glides, the head can't travel smoothly enough to read the tracks. Most DVD recorder manufacturers use white lithium or silicon grease on the, on the glides. I advise using the silicon oil as the grease will eventually wear away again. The oil will saturate the glide rod journals and hold longer and revitalize the surviving grease. I will show you how to general service this recorder as it was the most sophisticated player of its time. Chances are your player is probably much simpler and will be easier to service. First, let's remove the cover. Now it's important to note here that the uh, uh, workspace should have a grounded rubber mat to prevent stray static electricity uh, from damaging the sensitive electronics. So uh, this metal cover here covers the uh, mechanical part of the, of the uh, system, uh, the one that looks like a metal, flat metal box. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into it. Now first we must remove the steel enclosure, which um, acts as a grounding and electromagnetic shield. And try not to bounce it. Always make sure your screwdriver is seated completely down into the screw before you start turning. Otherwise you risk stripping the head of the screw and that can cause all kinds of issues. All right, now, these are ribbon cables. They're very uh, delicate cables. There are many conductors in these cables and they have a little, um, tabs 
designed to grab the uh, cable safely without destroying it. So you take your pliers, latch onto that little tab in the middle, remove each one. We've got one over here. Okay, now there's a <clears throat> more heftier cable. which drives the motor. And I have a little tool like a, a screwdriver that I ground down and bent the tip on to make a little miniature pry bar. Get down underneath that connector, work your way across it gently. Pop it off. Okay, now we can remove the drive. Little latch right there. Boing. We'll set the chassis aside. Now, if this is the first time you've torn into your player, you'll have a, a couple little pieces of security tape. And I just take an X-Acto knife and slice through that. I've been into this, this one before. So those, those pieces of tape have, are loosened, are broken. Cover off. Make sure it's clean. Now we have cats. So uh, I've cleaned this before. And uh, I've taken, before I've taken a shop, my shop vac and vacuumed out <clears throat> all the hair and debris that was in here. Uh, it doesn't need it this time. But here's your head that moves. There's your lens. Be careful. Do not, I repeat, do not touch that lens. Uh, it's suspended on four little springs. And if you knock that out of alignment, you can no longer use the player. But here are the glide rods. Here are the glide rods. These are your journals. Uh, they ride on the glide rods. And I can tell this one's sticking. I've been having trouble with this player because last time I had a part, I, I did not lube it properly. So I'm going to show you how to lube it properly. This is the cap stand that spins the disc. And you got a little motor down in here. So you don't need to mess with that. <clears throat> and the lens looks clean. So I'm going to use a few drops of silicon oil. Um, this is just a basically pouring oil, oil, and uh, it's a little oily, so you want a paper towel. And you want to get down into these journals put just a drop in there. You want a needle applicator. We get on each side. And don't get too generous with it just yet. We're gonna loosen up that head. Now when you get down in the journals again, Try not to get any oil on that lens.
no more oil. Now, too much can be too much, but in this case, it's like those little journals are really soaking it up. And it's a lot smoother. A lot smoother. A little bit more. Okay, that should do it. I protect the needle with a little piece of vinyl tubing because they do get bent and broken. Okay. Make sure everything's clean. Now, it's generally a good idea to check the lens. Make sure there's no debris. Hold it up in the light, check the reflection. It looks like a clean reflection, reflection so we'll put it back together. Okay. I generally date when I general service the unit. November 2020. Get the chassis back here. Now there's a little key right here on this player. There's a grounding strap, you gotta watch for that. Back here there's a grounding strap. It grounds the top cover. Okay. Now, before I start putting connectors back in, I'm going to secure the chassis, the drive to the chassis. Now, when you start a screw, back it up counterclockwise, lefty loosey, and then righty tighty. Now, I don't go tight all the way down until I get all four screws in. This way the threads will line up and you're not stripping out threads. So lefty to a clicks, do the click, and then you can tighten it a little bit. And if you don't do it that way, you will damage the threads, <clears throat> the female threads, and then uh, the, drive won't, the, the drive won't fit into the chassis securely. There, click. Now I've got all four in. I'm going to tighten them down. You don't, want, you don't need to torque them down like you're putting on a tire. Just tighten with your fingers, not your hand. Tighten with your fingers. Tighten with fingers. These two screws. Hold the cover to the 
chassis platform. Lefty Lucy. Ready tidy. Finger tight. Okay. Now, this we must not forget. Get these connectors back in place. That one went in a lot easier and it came out. Now grab the tab, make sure it's lined up before you start pushing. Do not want to damage these type of connectors, these ribbon connectors. Make sure you line them up first. Push gently down. Push gently down. Okay, now this, uh, most players, good players have this little grounding tab. It grounds the top cover of the, to the chassis to prevent static electricity from uh, going rampant in electronics, these sensitive electronics and zapping them cause all kinds of problems. So we're ready to put the cover back on. Make sure everything's plugged back in properly. Okay, so there you have it. And your players should work just fine. Well, I hope this helped. Uh, I do thank you for watching and please add any comments if you wish. Thank you.